Well, what on earth is that? Well, it's a lamp that is in need of restoration. I'll stand back here first and sweep from the bottom up. Okay. Yes, it's a little on the risque side for the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, but it uh, was the rage in France. In fact, many of these were made in France, some in Germany and in uh, other European countries. A lot of people refer to these as Newell Post lamps, and sometimes they were Newell Post lamps, but many of them were table lamps. So they were actually, you know, meant for, for illuminating uh, a room just to sit on a table and not necessarily uh, bolted down to a newel, newel post. This particular one uh, is a table lamp and not a newel post lamp. So, well, what is it? Well, if we want to be fancy, we'll call her a femme fleur lamp. And most folks just call these figural lamps. And this would have been made around the turn of the century, the late 19th century into about 1910 or so. Something like that. Now, I'm going to zoom in and let you have a really good look at her, but I'll tell you first, she's in rough shape, but she's restorable. She is made out of spelter, uh, which is, well, I guess synonymous with zinc, but it's really a mixture of zinc, or copper, some brass. Uh, it was used instead of bronze, and uh, it, you saw a lot of items in the late 19th, late 19th century would be cast out of uh, spelter, inexpensive items, candlesticks, clocks, lamps such as this, maybe bookends, and a lot of Art Nouveau uh, lamps. She would have been gilded. Uh, gilded bronze, of course, is called ormolu. I don't know what you call gilded um, spelter, <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a soft metal and it's very easily damaged. Uh, not nearly as hard and tough as bronze, and of course nowhere near as expensive. So she at some point was either, well we can see that she's a little little dented here, not dented, but she, this is bent out of shape, and then she was either knocked into or, or fell over, and she's come loose here, so we're going to have to, that's okay, we're going to just epoxy that. It's a nice clean break, but that's it. Uh, just that one split right there, which we really wouldn't even call a break. Uh, her neck isn't broken, nor are her arms. You can see just the traces of gilding which are left, but but not much. Thank goodness no one took the awful can of spray paint to her. She's missing a bit of her foliage back here. I think we only have one leaf left. There would have been another one here. And um, that looks like that's about it, just here and here. I don't see any traces up top. So we're missing a couple leaves. We can leave her like she is, or we could replace those leaves off of another junk lamp. Again, she dates to the 1890s to uh, 1910 at the latest. And uh, all her gilding is gone. Uh, someone has replaced... Let's see, that's a replacement chain there. This looks like an old original. Uh, but the chain lengths are incorrect, uh, the sockets need to be redone, and she it needs to be totally rewired. But you can see, we'll give you a good look at her. She's a beautiful lamp, and um, what am I going to do to the finish on this? Well, I think you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do almost nothing. That's right. Now, would it be okay to put a new patina on it? Well, I mean, you could. I'm going to clean it, uh, but 
I have no intentions of regilding it. Uh, I like this worn old finish, and it's worn very evenly. So for that reason, I'm just going to clean her and leave her exactly like she is. Okay. So uh, what's going to be somewhat difficult, well, not difficult, but extra steps is we've got two sockets to wire and we've got to feed electrical cord through these two rods which are very narrow and I don't know if I'm going to show you my cord over there and kind of talk about that in a moment but uh, I may have to get a smaller grade uh, electrical cord than what I've got now all we're really going to need are a couple of screwdrivers some wire and I actually go the extra mile and I purchase reproduction gold silk covered wire, which is very similar to what would have been on it when it was new. This is, uh, uh, I think we're going to be okay here with this. Okay, so this is not uh, cheap. Uh, there's a wonderful store up in Manhattan on uh, 8th Avenue and 30, I want to say 36th, 37th Street. And anytime I'm in Manhattan, I always, I love that store. And I always grab a great bit, or purchase a great big uh, bolt of that stuff. And then at flea markets, I'm always looking for antique sockets. And you can see I've got four different sockets here to choose from. Uh, this one with acorns. It's wonderful. And then these here. Uh, believe it or not, folks, these antique sockets right here have value. Uh, they make reproductions, and you're going to pay 8 or $9 uh, per reproduction. And these old uh, particular ones sell very well on the Internet, and I'm always looking for these when I'm at flea markets and so forth. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're going to do it and do it right. Use the old reproduction cord, which will make it safe, and use, an old, old, use the old sockets. It looks so much better than if someone just cuts off an extension cord and rewires this thing. I think it looks hideous, so I'm doing it the right way. And then over here, um, we may or may not be using these. I think this was an afterthought that someone stuck on there. These are usually on ceiling fixtures. And we can see they're splattered with paint and they're a much different color. And as you can see, it does not match. It's pretty, uh, so, but I think it's overkill, so we're probably not gonna be using them. But I'm gonna be using flicker light bulbs and uh, antique glass beaded light bulb shades, which would have been appropriate on a lamp like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is the repair work on it, which is going to be to epoxy this back in place. Uh, and then we're going to get these old sockets off of here, open them up and see what we've got. Okay? But before I do that, you have noticed that my cup of coffee is empty. And those ginger snaps are just dying to be dunked. So let me get the percolator going and we'll be back with the full lamp restoration right here on the old curiosity shop. Stay tuned. Okay, loved ones. What I have decided to do is not to do the repair just yet on this broken arm over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the sockets off and give you an idea of what the original wiring, we should, we should be able to find some old original wire on the inside. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Now it's already loose, which is nice because uh, I'm not really concerned about damaging anything. So we're going to go ahead and twist the socket, which is threaded, and it should come right off of there. You want to be careful with spelter. If you're getting any, if you get any uh, resistance, be careful and you might want to consider squirting it with a little DW40 and letting it rest. Okay, I can tell that it's wired. What's holding it on now is the old wiring. So let's see here. I don't know what I've done with my wire cutters. I've stepped out of the picture for a moment. Don't worry, I'm, I'm coming back, but I'm rooting through my drawers. Pardon the expression trying to find 
my wire cutters, and I think I, I think they're in a bag somewhere. Anyway, we're going right. to go. And we can see, oh yes. So, <laughs> this is what's holding us up, is all of this. Now, that is some original uh, turn of the 19th century wiring in there. Okay, you'd be a fool to plug that in. By the way, I forgot to tell you that, uh, how can we tell if this is bronze or spelter? Bronze is going to have a yellowish color if you scratch it. Spelter is going to look silver. And we, because we can turn this upside down and look, you can see the silver color of this spelter underneath, which hasn't been patinated. Um, I, I would also say, which I neglected to say, that this is a this is a patented uh, a patination on it. Uh, this uh, brown color or bronze color is a, a was would be applied over the spelter first, and then she was gilded. So we really do have an original uh, uh, patination. It's just what's it's the layer that wasn't meant to be seen. Um, the gilding goes over top of this uh, bronze patination, but I'm leaving it like it is, as I said. Okay, all right, so um, we have to, let's see here, we have to, okay, all right. You can see in there the metal rods from her arms are coming down, from the sockets, rather. And um, we're not going to be able to get this out of there until we cut that off. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute, go find my um, wire cutters, and we'll be right back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm loosening, loosening up the uh, socket wires, which have come down and are fed through the two metal rods. I also, somebody plugged up the hole uh, where the wires would have come out to go to the outlet, which is somewhat unusual. We can see underneath here there are three metal clips, which would have, or four metal clips, which ha which would have originally held a bottom to this, a metal bottom to this, which is gone. And we can see that this uh, deep inside now you can clearly see the silver color, uh, which lets us know it's spelter. Okay, so what I've got to do, I've got one free right here, so this is just going to slide right out of there. And uh, I've got to, there's some old electrical tape here that we've got to get off because this won't come through, it's too thick. And uh, I know my hand is in the way, you're, you're not really able to see what I'm doing, but that's the best I can do. Okay. All right, again, we've got to be careful with spelter because you will break it. And uh, I'm not trying to do that. All right, we're almost there. I'm being careful not to uh, squ uh, spray these wires all over the place because you get that on the carpet, you get this on your floor and step on that with no shoes on and uh, you're going to use some colorful language. Okay, let's get you in there and let you see. Hold still, hold still. Okay, we've got the wires uh, broken, so we should be able to pull these sockets right out. Let's see if we can do it. All right, she's back in place, and I'm gonna be as gentle as I can. Oh, well, okay. I wasn't expecting that to happen, but uh, we didn't break anything. Wonderful, okay, there is the beautiful decorative I don't know if those are acanthus leaves or just general foliage that uh, cover the light bulb, light socket. There's a wonderful old fat boy brass socket that we're going to be uh, seeing if we're, it still works. 
but we certainly, well, nope, the chain has just gotten itself all caught up in there. So that either needs to be rebuilt or we need to put a new, new innards, but we're going to keep the outer casing to this old socket. Not going to replace it with a modern shiny brass socket. Heaven forbid if you were to stick a brand new brass socket in there, it would look awful. All right. Here's the old wire sticking out. Uh, if I were afraid that, uh, let me get that off my hands. What did I do with my, oh. All right, if I were afraid that I could not uh, feed this through this tiny little tube myself, what I could do is attach it to the other end. And then when I pull this, that would feed this through the tube and it would snake its way through with no problem. Uh, but I think I'm gonna be okay without it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get this old wire out. So it is really, really dry rotted in there. And I may actually have to turn this thing upside down and pull it out through the bottom. So we're gonna try that. We'll turn her upside down and get, get right in there and twist and pull. And uh, it's, it's moving. It's not coming very quickly, but it is moving. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh my goodness, it's like pulling hen's teeth. Okay, look at that. That wire hasn't seen the light of day since 1890. <laughs> wow, it's like being an archaeologist. Look at that. Okay, there it is. That's the original wire. Now, this is the end. That's all, you know, this is the... This is the end that's all dry rotted and has seen the light of day. And uh, then here's the beautiful wire that has been protected inside this lamp since she was, this is original wire. So if she dates to 1900, we're talking about electrical cord that has not seen the light of day in over 100 years. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm saving this. I love this. Okay, this is just the kind of thing that I want to save. That's fantastic. All right, so we've got that out of there. And uh, now it's a matter of pulling this socket apart. So we're not going to do... You know, you got to be careful because some of these, you it'll say on there, press. And others have a, a little tiny... Uh, thing that catches. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, this one's going to come right off. And you'll see how beautiful uh, these sockets were. Look at the beautiful brass uh, when it was new. Now, I'm not going to polish it back up to that, but I will be cleaning these. See that? And if we look closely, we're probably going to be able to see... The, uh, the maker, and I'm not, there's so much corrosion on it, we're going to have to clean it to see, but anyway, we do want to save these car the cardboard insulation, okay, we need that, we need this as well, I'm not going to get rid of it, it's important to insulate the uh, socket, Oop, let me get back in the frame, okay, so we're going to be saving that, reusing it, and there's the old, uh, there's the old original socket. And let's see. We have a made in USA socket, so we may have a domestic lamp here instead of one uh, from France, unless the sockets were replaced sometime in the 1920s. This is a pull chain and it's, it's got some problems. I think the spring, okay, now we're, yeah, this, uh, what I'll probably do for safety's sake is put a new pull chain socket in here. Uh, it's not going to make a difference in value. This you'll never see, but we will be preserving the old case to the socket. 
because this wants to get caught, this spring wants to get caught up here, and sure as you're born, I'll get this rewired and it will it will get it will catch again and break and get caught there and not, not function as it should. So it's better to just go ahead and replace it while we've got it all apart, and then we don't have to worry. Alright, so what a mess. Let me show you now. I've got this old tea towel down here, and um, it's quite a mess, but uh, boy, she's going to be beautiful when she's all back together again. Okay, everyone, I uh, would like to show you something that's kind of interesting to me anyway. Uh, when the lamp was all together in one piece, I was looking at the chains. And if you remember looking at them originally, it appeared as though this one was a newer chain, or at least not quite as old as this one. And I can tell that by these little decorative brass caps, the way the chains are finished. And actually, it's true. When pulling these apart and looking at the insides, we've got two different sockets from two different eras. Now, it was not unusual for these pull chain sockets to quote unquote go bad. Uh, there's lots of moving parts, including springs that fall out of place. And these are notorious for, well, breaking apart and being, needing to be replaced. This is the older one, and you'll notice that uh, this one is still working, actually. And this is the way they were made in those days. Um, actually, I was able to look at the... Uh, this is the case that this one came out of, and there's a patent date uh, on this case, which is going to be difficult for you to see, but I was able to see it when I cleaned it up. There's a patent date on here of 1907. And so this older socket with these, uh, with these two ceramic, uh, this sort of ceramic sandwich uh, is, it dates to about 1907, you know, to 1910, that, in that era. And uh, you can see the spring mechanism on the inside. I don't know if you can see that, but these go bad and often need to be replaced. This one with a either some type of an early plastic like a Bakelite uh, still is spring-loaded, but it's probably from the 1920s or 30s. So we have an older socket from about 1907 to 1910, and a newer socket from the 1920s or 30s. And this one may or may not be an original. This one is probably the, one of the original sockets. Uh, so just an interesting look at the in at, uh, antique electronics. Okay, that's going to do it for part one of Let's Fix That Old Lamp. Um, and, uh, well, I hope that you'll tune back in to an upcoming uh, episode of The Old Curiosity Shop where you will see this beauty uh, come back to life. Can we do it? Uh, you'll have to stay tuned and find out. So for right now, we're going to call it quits. This is Scott from The Old Curiosity Shop saying, You light up my life! Thanks for watching. So long for now.